Okay, so today I'm just going to talk about Fred Heat. Um, Fred Heat is something I've been developing in the background that worked on last winter um, and hopefully getting a, a few more users testing it this time around. Um, <clears throat> the idea is to predict um, the amount of heating energy that's needed in your property, um, either through a gas boiler or through a heat pump, which is probably where it comes in being more useful with PredBat. Um, so Pred, um, PredHeat is now integrated into PredBat, and so it can just be, you need to turn it on by enabling the PredHeat toggle, but you also need to configure it in the um, apps.yaml first um, in order for it to um, function. Um, there's some documentation in the PredBat user guide on on how to set it up. Um, it's not nearly as comprehensive as I'd like, and if anyone else is contributing to it, that'd be great. So the idea is that it um, runs every five minutes and makes a prediction of the heating system. And it's this is any system where you've got a volume of water that's being heated, so it's normally heated by a boiler or a heat pump, um, so radiators, essentially. Um, you can input an external temperature sensor. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a real one though. There's a um, uh, online resources that um, you can get through Home Assistant for external temperature. Um, it wants to know the current temperature and also the predicted temperatures in the future. Um, um, and then you need some sort of internal temperature sensor, um, ideally your home thermostat. Um, it's whichever thing is gonna use normally to control your heating. Um, and you also need a target temperature sensor. This is basically what you set your thermostat to. Um, this has to be something with history because you can adjust the thermostat and then pretty easy will use the history to predict how you're going to adjust it in the future. So um, in the very simplest case, you could just create an input number in Home Assistant and set it to a fixed number if that's what you had. But I link it up to my Nest thermostat so I actually know what it's set to. Um, for the target temperature. Um, you, then a heating energy sensor is also very useful. It's not strictly required, but it's very hard to calibrate if you don't know how much energy you're actually using. Um, something in kilowatt hours. Um, and you um, for the flow temperature, which is essentially the, um, the temperature coming out of your... Um, a boiler or a heat pump, um, yeah, this can be um, just set to a static value or um, or it can be a sensor. Um, and um, you need to know your current energy rates. Um, this is already set up in PrevBat anyway, but if you're using gas, you'll have to make sure you have the gas. Um, and then you have to figure out some data about your home to actually calibrate this. Um, what the outputs are is a prediction of the internal temperature of your house going forward and how much energy you're going to use and therefore how much it will cost. How much energy you use will um, allow you um, to actually link it up to PredBat and actually add it to your home battery predictions as well. Um, so you also need to use the open weather installation of Home Assistant um, where you can... Um, uh, you can create a free account, but you do need a credit or debit card to actually create it. And you get a thousand API calls per day, which for free, which is way more than you're ever going to need. Uh, and just set the limit to a thousand in case something went crazy. Then set up in Home Assistant, and now you'll be able to get predictions of the weather. Um, Apex charts you've already, already have because you've got PrepBat. Um, and then there's a configuration guide here as to how to set it up. Um, have to set up the external temperature sensor um, and uh, your target temperature set whether you've got a smart thermostat or not. So a smart thermostat is one where it actually predicts what temperature your house needs to be in terms of heating on ahead of time, whereas the dumb one has just got temperature setting, um, setting up the heating energy. Um, and any scaling you want to apply to that. I found with my boiler sensor, it wasn't hugely accurate. I had to scale it based on my real gas consumption. Um, 
and and then you have to do some work on the radiators in your house figuring out how many liters of volume of radiators you've got and what their btus are at delta 50 um adding up all the btus and then you can gain the heat output in watts and you can set that you can also add up the liters of water you don't really have to measure the liters of water you can make an approximation based on the radiator's data and set the heat volume, um, set your max and minimum power uh, for your heating system. Um, so if you a heat pump, it'll be maximum power output. Um, and the heat pumps pretty much go down to zero on the minimum power output. As gas boilers don't, I think my gas boiler goes down to only like seven kilowatts, which is actually quite high. Um, set your COP, which is going to be your maximum COP of your uh, system. So for gas boiler, you use one because it will scale based on flow efficiency for a heat pump. Use the value, e.g. four or whatever, whatever your maximum is design cop, and then it will scale up and down automatically based on the external weather. Um, then there's the flow temperature. Um, so whatever it's set to. Um, so gas boiler, you might say it's 60 or 70. Some people might actually have a sensor for this while the heat pump's normally 30 or 40. Um, and set the flow difference target. That's the difference between the um, uh, the output temperature of the heating um, and <clears throat> the, um, uh, the actual water itself. So as it gets closer to... Um, but below that target, it'll start to scale down the power. Um, and we also need to uh, set volume temperature. Um, if you don't have a sensor for this, then just let Pratty calculate volume temperature automatically. Um, it will just do that based on the, the next volume temperature and store it. Um, I don't actually have a sensor for volume temperature. You can also adjust these tables of gap gas efficiency or heat pump efficiency tables. They're pre-loaded um, in for some standards, but um, obviously yours could, you could refine it with more data for your particular system. And the delta correction is set up for standard radiators, like the ones you'd buy at B&Q. If you've got different type of radiators, you may need different delta corrections to go from the delta 50 to a particular um, uh, deltas based on the radiator temperature. Now the tricky bit is actually calculating heat loss for your home. Um, this is the way I did it. Um, I, I actually looked at some historical temperature data on my sensor, find a time in the last few weeks when your heating was off and it's reasonably cool out so the house is actually cooling down and then work out how many degrees the house drops in a given time period. So I lost one and a half degrees in three hours. Um, and then divide it by the difference between the inside and the average um, inside average temperature and outside the average temperature. So it's 19 degrees inside and nine degrees outside, and that's a 10 degree difference. So if I lost one and a half degrees in three hours with a 10 degree difference, I've got 0 0.05, and then set this to heat loss degrees. Um, so I might be able to automate this in future, but it's probably difficult on the heat pumps because they're not normally turned off. Um, as with the heating on, it's quite hard to figure that one out. Then you need to look at the number of watts of heat loss in your house. Um, so this is what you can do by looking at the energy consumed with your heating on, pick a period of heating, and the time the temperature starts increasing for, say, an hour, work out the increase in temperature in degrees, add that to the static heat loss, which you calculated earlier, um, and divide that by external temperature again, um, and you get a final figure in watts. Um, and then that, that puts into the app start YAML. Um, and, um, and then also you can set a static heat gain, and this is like a correction factor based on things that are in your house that isn't your heating, that is doing heating, like people or computers. You may need to fiddle around with this on the calibration. So that's the sort of things you need to do to set it up. And then once it is set up, you will get something like this, where essentially 
you get some predictions. This chart's a bit me um, messy. It's got too many things on, I think. But if I look at the energy to start with, I can see the, my actual energy uses so far. And I can see the predicted energy usage. And hopefully those are fairly similar. So you can see us, my heating came on around 5 a.m. It was a little bit overnight, but it basically came on at 5 a.m. and it's been running today. And I'm going to use 48 kilowatt hours of gas today. And then from here to tomorrow, it's predicting um, less than that um, until the end of tomorrow. It is actually going to be a bit warmer tomorrow. Um, it may also be because we have a habit of turning the thermostat up a bit at some point. Um, but um, you, you can obviously try and calibrate this as well, fiddling around with the settings. Um, you can see the volume temperature predicted, which is essentially when the heating comes on and mine, it's a gas system, so it gets up reasonably warm and then it cools down quite quickly. And so you can see that going up and forwards. You can see the um, external temperature actually, all that was what was measured, and then the predicted external temperature in the future. That's coming from the open weather map. And then you can see the target temperature predicted. This is what predicting my thermostat be set to. It goes off at night and one in the day, and it goes up and down a little bit. Um, you can see my predicted internal temperature, which is kind of staying relatively constant. Um, and that was my actual internal temperature for the previous day. Um, and uh, that was the actual target temperature, what the thermostat was set to. Um, so those, um, I mean, this is the predicted volume temperature you saw that before. And then there's this heat calibration chart, um, which you can also use. Uh, I'll turn off the target temperature for a minute, that's not very interesting. That's the actual external temperature. You can actually see the predictions from one hour ahead and eight hours ahead versus the actual temperature. And you can see it's not completely aligned. So this would have been last night when I turned the heating on. It wasn't predicted, it was going to turn it on. And so therefore it went up higher and therefore it falls down from a higher phase. But what you're looking for is these gradients looking about right. Um, and then you can see my actual heating costs so far based on the energy consumed and the predicted costs over the next couple of days. Um, and so that's it really. Um, and then obviously this heating energy, well, heating energy calibration is also the predicted energy over the next few hours versus what the actual energy was. You can see it's relatively lined up. It's a bit messy. Um, unfortunately, this graph gets reset at midnight, so it kind of get these weird jumps down. So that's why they look a bit funny. Um, but ignoring that, it seems to be kind of working. And then what you can do is you can configure prep back to take this predicted energy into it. Um, you use that against your own battery predictions if you've got a heat pump. Um, so obviously, um, have a look at this feedback, see if you can find some bugs. I'm sure there will be bugs, unfortunately. Um, we'll see if we can improve it in the future. Um, I think the other thing I can probably show is the apps.yaml, which has actually been set up here. And the way to do it now, if you look at your apps.yaml, if we look down towards the bottom of it, you'll see PredHeat is now an item inside the PredBatApps.yaml. Everything else should be indented. Um, you can see my external temperature sensor, which is that template. It's really has to configure. This is my uh, Nest living room temperature sensor. This is the open weather map, which you have to enable. This is, again, my target temperature for my Nest. It's a smart thermostat. This is my heating energy it comes from my boiler sensor. And I'm scaling it to actually try and line it up. Um, so I don't think it measures the actual gas consumption very accurately. Um, and um, this is when the heating is um, active. I've got a sensor, so I can see the history behind that. 
my heat loss watts is 120 watts per degree of temperature difference. Um, and this is my house loss degrees per degree of temperature difference. Um, my heating output um, of my radiators is that's actually normally 70 kilowatts at 50 degrees, 17 kilowatts. My heat volume about 17 liters. My gas boiler is up to 30 kilowatts and down to seven. Um, copper 1.0. Um, this is my boiler flow temperature setting. I've got a sensor for that. And my difference target is 40. Um, and uh, these I haven't actually set because they're hardwired. No, they're defaulted in pretty heat, but you can override them if you like, and you can also put them in steps of one if you want more accurate data. Um, that's about it. Um, well, I hope you find that um, useful as a short introduction. I think you might have to do a more detailed one in, in the future, but uh, let me know what you think.